Selection 3 The Fear Place by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor On vacation in Colorado, Doug Grio is alone. His parents have left on an emergency. His brother Gordy has gone off by himself after a fight with Doug. Their mom and her brother fought too. Doug has kept busy studying mammals for his scout merit badge, even befriending a cougar he calls Charlie. But now he has set off to find Gordy. To reach him, Doug must find the same courage his dad found when he fled Cuba. Doug must get past his fear place, a narrow ledge 600 feet above a canyon which he had vowed never to face again. What path there was led over scattered pitches of bedrock, across ramps of boggy tundra, then climbed some more, becoming a narrow, zigzagging passageway. Doug followed the steep, slanting boilerplate rock, ledged with wildflowers, catching glimpses now and then of a distant snowfield. At one point, he could see a ridge far above, where he could just make out an elk cow leading her calf. At times, the journey seemed futile, for Doug would climb, scrabbling and panting, up the rock face, around steep boulders, then make his way, feet sliding, down another gully, losing all the altitude he'd worked so hard to gain. He was dismayed that he was thirsty again. At this rate, there would be little left for Gordy, so he took the cap off his canteen, and drank only a swallow. Every time he stopped, the fear inside him grew larger, however. At times, it seemed to be the climb that frightened him most. Other times, it was worry about his brother. And then, as though that weren't worry enough, his parents. He plowed on, keeping his mind on other things, trying to remember the wildlife he'd seen so far. Elks. He could use those in his report. A snowshoe rabbit, he'd use that one too. And a marten. He'd also seen two Stellar's jays and a gray jay. Too bad he wasn't working on a merit badge in bird study while he was here. Doug was nearing the first ridge. At 9,000 feet, he'd read oxygen was about half of what it was at sea level. He had no idea how high he was. Stormy Peaks to his left was over 12,000 feet. With each ascending step, the air seemed to change. A mountain has its own weather, Dad had told him. At high altitudes, a hiker could encounter sunshine, rain, sleet, ice pellets, wind, and snow, all in one afternoon, sometimes even in the space of an hour. The weather changed minute by minute, valley by valley, range by range. It helped to keep his mind busy. This isn't so bad, he said aloud, wanting to hear a human voice, even his own. You've climbed a lot worse than this. Walking along the ridge crest, he followed a route through a long granite fin that stretched like a roofless tunnel before him. He remembered this tunnel from the first time he was up here and was reassured he was on the right path. If only it went on like this all the way to where Gordon was camped, he'd have no problem. He had strength, stamina. A climb like this, no matter how rocky, he could do forever, as long as there were sides to enclose him. When he came out again into open space, the winds buffeted him. A hawk he had startled from a nearby rock flew directly past, so close that Doug could hear the steady flap of its wings. He held tightly to a rock, not wanting to look down, but did. It didn't frighten him particularly, because there was plenty of room between him and the edge. Over the rocky hogback, slabbed with quartz and sprinkled with muscovite, he could see a tongue of aspen crowding the narrow gorge below. It looked like the set for a model railroad. It occurred to him that if he were more like the other members of his family, he would actually enjoy a hike like this. He would have set out that morning with a feeling of excitement. 
Then he thought of Gordon and how this wasn't the time for adventure. What would he find when he got up there? All the possibilities. That was another word to remember. Possibilities. Almost anything was possible, Mom had told him once. But not everything was probable. Which was more likely? That he'd find Gordon okay up there on the ridge? Or that something awful had happened? That he'd find Gordon okay, he guessed. Which was more likely? That he would get around the ledge just fine? Or that his foot would slip and he'd fall 600 feet to his death? He shakily sucked in his breath. That everyone else would be able to get around the ledge without trouble, he had no doubt. That he, Doug Grio, could do it was a different story. So he tried to think of the climb as something ordinary. When he stopped at the next level place on the trail, not even winded, he took time to look out between the trees. He could just make out Long's Peak from here. Old Granite Head, they called it. Weird, he was thinking now, that there were probably a hundred climbers on it right this minute, and Doug couldn't see any of them. Looking into the distance at Long's Peak, in the quiet of morning, it looked peaceful and unthreatening. It didn't fool him for a minute. He knew the stories of the people who had died. He knew about the guy who... Doug pushed the thought out of his mind. Don't, he told himself as he set off again. Concentrate on rocks. Okay, rocks. Precambrian rock, his dad had told him. The rock that formed Long's Peak was here before there was anything else on the planet. Heat and pressure changed sediments to harder and harder rock until sediments became schist and gneiss, quartz and feldspar. Mica, layers of rock. Layers that had their beginnings in some huge disturbance inside the earth. He'd done a paper on it once for science. Doug didn't know why, but he felt a vague sense of discomfort, like some unpleasant memory tapping at the side of his head. No, he thought fiercely. He was doing too well. No unpleasant thoughts now, thank you. The muscles in Doug's legs carried him easily with each stride. He forced himself to think positively, concentrating on his strength. He didn't even bother to rest at the next place the ground leveled out, but moved on around the curve of the mountain, inching down steep, rocky troughs chiseled out by water, then making his way through a long maze of rocky outcrops. Layers. It came back to him now. That was the word that seemed so unpleasant. Layers of rock, he'd been thinking, that had their beginnings in some huge... Layers of feelings, of grudges, wasn't that how Mom had described it with her and Uncle Lloyd? One thing piled on top of another, she had said. So many layers, we never did get to the bottom of it. Would Mom have climbed this mountain to rescue Lloyd? Well, Doug was doing it for Gordon, wasn't he? So, no, what happened between her and Lloyd was not the same as him and Gordy at all. She was right. There was a noise behind him, and he stopped. It was like a rock, falling, tumbling, rolling behind him down the trail, too far back for him to have caused it. He turned and waited, seeing nothing, hearing nothing more, then moved on again. At this point, there was a vertical face of rock on one side of him, boulders and scrub trees on the other. With each upward step he took, the small trees retreated from the landscape, but the wide expanse of boulders remained. He liked that, liked a wide span between him and the gorge below, a monstrous guardrail. If ever the fear that terrified him in high places convinced him to simply fling himself over the edge and get it over with, the boulders would be there to say no. Suddenly, he felt that familiar thump against his thigh. Man, Charlie, he gasped, leaning against the rock wall. You scared me half to death. 
The cougar came up around him, looked at Doug a moment, then moved on, checking once to see if he was coming. Hold your horses, he said, unsure of whether he wanted her with him or not. Was it conceivable, he wondered, that the cougar had a den up here? That she spent most of the day among the rocks, coming home each morning, then going out to hunt around dusk? That was another thing to think about now, one more thing to occupy his mind. But thinking about Charlie led to thinking about Gordon, and Doug decided it would have been better if the cat hadn't come. The rocky path far up ahead suddenly fell into shadow, and Doug glanced at the sky. The clouds overhead were hard to read, dark around the edges, with the sun gleaming behind them and the wind trying to push them unwanted from this part of the sky. The farther Doug climbed, the narrower the stretch of safety on his left. When he first started out, there was nothing at all but trees and meadow then trees and rocks, then mostly boulders and a few scrubby trees. Each time he stepped, however, the span on his left grew smaller. Now the low, twisted trees gave way to rock entirely, and the span had narrowed to the point that Doug could see the gorge below almost continuously. The hillside seemed to be receding, the edge coming closer to the trail. There were a few places Doug was sure where, if he were to lie down crosswise on the path, his feet against the cliff, his arms stretched above his head, his fingers would touch the drop-off. He tried to redirect his thoughts. How you doing up there, Charlie? He called shakily to the cougar, who seemed to be waiting for him at the next rise. The cat stretched out her head toward the sun and panted, the closest thing yet to a smile. But there was a drumbeat starting now in Doug's chest. He could feel it. Seemed almost to hear it, like a foghorn out over a bay, the far-off whistle of a train. He thought of various guys in his troop, how they would be enjoying the trail about now, exclaiming every time there was a new view of the canyon below. He tried to imagine himself in their bodies, becoming Frank Jameson, for example, or Teddy Heinz. They were always the first ones to the top of any climb. But it didn't work. He wasn't Teddy or Frank. He was Doug Griot, who had come up this way with his family two years ago and had not been able to make it back without help. Now he was Doug Griot, here alone. About 200 yards more, he guessed, and he'd be at the spot. Snow-splattered ridges gleamed in the distance. He felt he could remember every rock, every root of the ledge. Should he stop a while and get his nerve up? 